Um, we're almost at the end of the conference. Um, we just uh, wanted to have a bit of a chat about the things that we've seen and uh, the impressions that we've had. Um, I'm here with Werner, with uh, Ronald, and with Chris. Um, each of them represent infrastructure providers in a way. Um, Werner comes from the Center for High Performance Computing in Cape Town. Uh, Ronald is from Kennet in Kenya, and uh, Chris works for the Ubuntu Net Alliance in Eastern Southern Africa. Um, so Werner, of the things you've seen, uh, what is struck you the most? What have, what have you seen that you thought like, mm, I need to find out more about that? Well, maybe I must first say that when it comes to open science and, and the activities and the, and the way things are done, it is a bit of a new world to me. And I've come to this um, event without necessarily expectations up front. And what I've seen here was really an integrated way of involving people um, the excitement of how people are integrated and how they work together and to promote this message of, of openness and, and, and the concepts that goes with this and, and also to be introduced to, to the, 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 the challenges that we still face in this regard. Yeah. It was all quite revealing to me and um, I, I was also, it was quite also interesting to, to, to note what platforms do we need to promote this further and it's obvious to me that a, a platform like a computing center or a HPC center is an obvious place where these things can be much better, well, implemented to to work for others. And um, I'm the first to say that at the CHPC these concepts are probably a bit novel still. Although it's a public facility, it's open for for public users and it's free for public yeah, users. Yes, and and but still, I think maybe we, we should agree there's a responsibility for the CHPC, yeah. to, to, to use the public nature of the platform to promote the open science ideas a bit further. Um, not necessarily as the, the, the entity that hosts everything, maybe not, but still to be part of the process to, to get the concepts to the users out yeah. and, and to promote it further. So exact what next steps, I'm, I'm still yeah. thinking with you, so <laughs> we, can, we can continue the discussion. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I think everybody has that feeling where you just think, okay, you know, I know we need this. This looks like a great thing. Um, you know, Ronald, can can you think of any like next steps that's uh, of anything that you've seen that you'd like to see come to home, come home to Kennet, let's say? Uh, okay, thank you. So so f for us at Kennet, what we are trying to do is to understand our community. Mm -hmm. That's very important for us, and then build infrastructures that they are going to use, they are going to put to immediate use. That's very important to us. So what we have done in the past couple of years is to work with initially EI for Africa, now Saigaya, and also be part of the community and help build these infrastructures. Mostly we started by building what, what was there before identity providers, certification authorities, mm -hmm. and then we reached a point and said, well, maybe we need to go out and find out what our community uses. Right. So we've done surveys, we've visited a number of universities in the country, and we've come to a conclusion that actually there are users who are using high-performance computing already in Kenya through their affiliation with other universities probably. And uh, there are many others who intend to use and have no avenue right. to access these things. Right. And so, that's why right now as I go back, we are planning on maybe rebuilding our IDP into a federation so that we can do the hub and spoke that guy told us about. Right. Yeah. And also do an open access repository. That I think will be key. So that you can display the yes. research. Yes, yeah, so that we can, yeah, because th there has been need in that area. Right. The researchers who have data and since they have nowhere to to keep the data, they are, they, they are kind of sure, certain that right. the data will disappear. Yeah. So they want a place, yeah, to, they want a place to put data, okay. and then people can also access this data. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we certainly, we can work together on that. And uh, what this project has shown us is that many, I mean, 
these two individuals are not funded, uh, sure. or at least your institutes are not funded by the yeah. project directly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we've nevertheless been able to get this out, and that was the, the goal of the of the project yes. to, to do something and hand it off to a community. Now, Chris over here um, lives in Malawi and uh, works for Ubuntu Net. Uh, it's a very under-resourced, uh, very sparse region, um, and nevertheless, you know, uh, we've seen some good work done by Ubuntu Net with the Identity Federation, uh, with open access repositories, with the cloud platform that you're working on. Um, Maybe you want to tell us a little bit more about what makes you excited at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And thank you. I think, um, yeah, I think the, the the services you just mentioned, these ones have, we've profited a lot from the Zagaya project, getting these up and running. So on the technical side, Bruce was helping, Mario was helping, and also in the capacity building training, they, these guys were involved as well. Um, yeah, as you said, I mean, we've, we, we, hear, we have like Kenneth is like an engine that is already well established. We have high, high performance computing where they have a lot of resources already. But when we look, when I look at the situation in Malawi, it's like th there's not a lot there. So, so it's, it's um, we can try to do these things, but it's, 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 it's not going to be on the same scale. So it's like... Um, yeah, but was it like if, if you're sitting, you're sitting, you're on a flight, you sit in economy and, and, you, and you read in, in the board magazine, you read the, the menu for first class. Yeah. We're, no, we're not going we, to, not, we're, not, we're not first class, we're sitting in economy. Yeah. But, but I think there's even there you have some, you have some... Um, some flight, things right? to do. It's still a flight. You're still yeah. going somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think what makes Ubuntu Net great is that uh, you've got a very tight knit community. Uh, you've got a, quite a dense region with Uganda and Kenya, and mm -hmm. you've got the Tanzanians. Um, do you do you feel that as well? I mean, you work in that region. How do you feel the community is well knit together, or is it still quite sparse? I think the community. Um, you have to be. You have to differ between the research community and and the NREN community. I think the NREN community. There we have well established ways of communication with the CEOs, with the engineers. But when it comes to the researchers, then we're still struggling. Sure. So, so we have this approach where we try to build these communities now in the, like from in the NRENs and then in the institutions as well. But this is only just starting now, so right. let's see where it goes. Well, we, we, we think we know where it's going, and that's up. <laughs> uh, so uh, lastly over here, we have OMO. Um, so OMO is obviously working for the Western Central African Regional Network, kind of sister project to Ubuntu Net, um, the, the new kid on the block, although you're not that new anymore. Um, you know, we've been extremely impressed by the work that's been done in Lagos and in Ghana and, and other places. Uh, how, did you, how did you get started so quickly? How, how, you know, this has been a great experience. Why don't you tell us a bit more about the sweat that happened behind the scenes? Right, we're still sweating. Um, I think it's all down to the projects. We sort of got in at a fortunate, a very good time for Wakren. So you've got Wakren just evolving, about to start the Africa Connect 2 project, which actually builds this network. And then here comes Saigaya, Tandem, and Magic. So Tandem, the whole point of Tandem was to prepare us for Africa Connect 2. So amongst uh, its objectives, it had establishing a roadmap for services. And Saigaya just basically created the opportunity. So that roadmap, because of the bouquet of services that Saigaya has basically opened, opened up for NRENs, that roadmap is actually linked very closely to Saigaya outputs. And then there's the whole concept of open science, which we hadn't really considered. Mm -hmm. So now that's a big thing on our agenda. There are the products from Saigaya to actually use immediately so it was, the hack first had to happen. So right. we had all these, all these goodies and there was nobody, these people who didn't know about it and then use cases who, that could benefit from this platform. So we basically had that. Now what's going to happen after is what we are looking forward to. Because with every good thing, every good thing comes that hidden need that you didn't realize you had. Yeah. So we're starting to find out that, okay, you know what, to really get the services across, we have to think about how we connect with the end user. So same, same situation. Hmm. Fortunately, we had this whole model that we had been exploring for connecting to, connecting to focal points in the different countries. And then when that wasn't sufficient, we sort of stepped that down a level to get focal points in the institutions. Yeah. Now, the bouquet of services that Saigaya provides gives us uh, a work plan 
for these four core points. Well, we look so, forward to putting yeah. them into action. So we should be, we should be seeing quite a bit of things from Wakren. Well, Werner, Ronald, Chris, Omar, and everybody else that's here, thank you so much for coming. As you've, uh, you've made my day uh, and, my, and our conference. <laughs> uh, and we'll certainly be bumping into you all again very soon. Thanks. Thank you very much.